The craze for personal water vehicles started about 30 years ago with the Hobie Cat. Now, a personal water vehicle can be defined as a small vehicle with extremely high performance, whether it be sail or engine powered, which is suitable for use by one or two or maybe three people. Now, the Hobie Cat came out of America. The Mari Cat took over from the Hobie in Australia. It was effectively an Australian designed and built Hobie Cat. But since then, personal water vehicles have been pretty well 100% imported, in other words made overseas and imported into Australia. The first jet ski we saw was a Kawasaki and when Kawasaki's uh, ownership of the patent on that particular type of water vehicle expired around about 15 years ago, virtually all other overseas manufacturers got in on the act. Now out of the personal water vehicle single or two person one has grown a, a newer one which is of a larger boat which has far more capabilities but which also has a similar degree of performance using the same basic high performance two-stroke engine with a jet drive. Now a couple of years ago Ron Woodley had a look around and decided that we or he could do at least as well as the overseas manufacturers and generate an entirely Australian designed and built personal water vehicle. Now that's all very well if Ron, as most people would have done, had said, OK, I'll build the hull and I'll import the engine jet units and put them in it, but he didn't do that. He went a little further and he decided that he would not only build, design and build the boat, but he would also do the same with the engine and jet unit. And this little vehicle that I'm leaning on here is 100% Australian designed and built and it has a truly superb power unit in it. When you consider that uh, Yamaha, Sea-Doo, Kawasaki and a number of other overseas manufacturers with huge resources behind them are building boats in this class, I must admit that when Rod, Ron Woodley told me what he was doing, I considered that it had a bit of a David and Goliath feel about it. But having looked at the boat in detail, driven it and shot these pictures of it, I believe he certainly has a chance of making it work. And obviously that will relate firstly to price and secondly to the performance of the boat, thirdly to the amount of support he gets from the local market. Now the boat is very unusual, it's effectively a mono hull with outriggers on it and we've been talking uh, uh, at some length about hull forms on the show in recent weeks. This really is a brand new one, the mono hull has a large flat flange all around the top of the hull just underneath the gunnel which makes it remarkably dry and the outriggers are fitted outside of the mono hull, the sides of the mono hull form, uh, effectively underneath these extended gunnels. Now that gives the boat a huge degree of stability at rest, a very soft ride underway, and the ability to safely and comfortably do the spin outs for which jet boats are so famous and which are so much fun. They give the boat a tremendous degree of dryness of ride and lateral stability. Acceleration under the urge of the 80 horsepower engine, which we'll look at in just a moment, uh, is really quite enthusiastic and in fact the boat is more than capable of towing a single skier. A beach start is obviously the easiest way to do it but this boat still proved her ability to stand the skier up out of deep water. Now this is an extension of the personal watercraft which I believe is truly relevant. It enables people to have all of the thrills of watercraft riding without necessarily getting quite as wet as you do in a, on a personal watercraft. You actually sit in this rather than on it. It has the ability to carry up to five people. Uh, three people would be optimum, I would suggest. It has a tremendous degree of fun as far as its driving is concerned. It will pull a skier and it can be used as a, a general runabout, as a tender for a large cruiser and also as a small fishing boat. And of course, all of this is greatly enhanced by the fact that it will run in something like a hundred millimetres of water at full speed, which no boat other than those fitted with a small jet drive is capable of doing. Now let's take a look at the technology of the engine. Now the power unit is fully integral. In other words, this engine is actually mounted on the casting, an extension of the casting that forms the jet unit down in the after end of the boat. So the only, the only mounting that's required is for the jet unit to be mounted in the boat and then the engine bolts onto the whole thing. Which means, of course, that there are absolutely no alignment problems for the shaft that drives the jet impeller. Now the engine itself is an RX800 manufactured by Global in Australia. You'll notice that this one has four plugs. The extra set of plugs aren't used in a marine application, they are in there for aviation applications. It's 750cc and it develops a total of 80 horsepower. 
Uh, it's naturally aspirated with a, a standard carburetor there, single carburetor for the marine version on a cast aluminium manifold. Uh, this casting here is an aluminium exhaust manifold which is powder coated and the temperature range of the engine is more than well demonstrated by the fact that after hours and hours of running there is no problems with heat with the powder coating. So the engine runs extremely cool. It draws its cooling water by the way from a, a, a pickup in the actual jet unit. So the cooling water comes in at extremely high pressure. It's got high volume cooling. These engines have undergone countless thousands of hours of testing and in fact one is used on the Sunshine Coast in a hovercraft for mosquito spraying. It's done 2,800 hours and requires not even the replacement of a set of plugs. The engine is performing exactly as it did when it was brand new. Now, I'm very impressed with this engine. I've looked inside it and in fact you're looking at some pictures of the inside of the engine, the crankshaft, the pistons, the combustion chambers now. It's superbly well designed and built. It has a large volume of cast uh, marine grade aluminium alloy in the block and the cylinder units which obviously makes the entire engine a heat sink and helps to enhance its overall reliability. It certainly is a magnificent unit and it's a tribute to Ron Woodley and the manufacturers of these engines that they've come up with a power unit which is at least the match of those that are fitted to the imported personal water vehicles.